Okay. Um, obviously, it's good to win. It's it's uh, a lot more lively around our building on Monday when we do. So it was a good job by our players and our assistant coaches. It was a uh, uh, good job preparing, good job executing, and uh, you know now we're that's ancient history. We're on to uh, Colorado State, and uh, we're going to work hard to try to move up in the Mountain West standings. Do you feel this game and why probably great chances to end this road losing streak? Well, they're they're up any time we go on the road to play, they're opportunities. Uh, so I, you know, I would consider any time we play a great chance to do that. So, I, you know, I don't want to discredit who we're playing at all. Uh, I, I think they're they're a good team. They're well coached, and uh, you know, on the TV show yesterday. Uh, we were talking about it, you know. We view this as a game we can win, but all their people and the guys that are sitting in your chairs uh, there and will be over the next three weeks view us as a team that they should beat. So uh, there'll be competitive Mountain West Conference games, and obviously we want to we want to go and play well and see if we can't do that. What do you think about being the road favorite in this game? Are we? Right, three and a half points, I think. I hadn't really thought. Obviously, I haven't thought about it because <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, you know, that's all about getting getting people to wager on it. Can, can you do <laughs> you're going to more than that. <laughs> you're like eight shows. Like, <laughs> <try it like. laughs> He's like, can you do anything diff differently, like as far as another road game, or do you just kind of preach the same message and just hope it sticks? Well, I think you prepare for every game like it's the most important game of the season because it's the only one you get that week. Football's unique that way. There are there's no looking past anything, and uh, consistency and preparation, um, I think, is where where people, where kids do their best when they know when they know what to expect. And so we'll we'll prepare consistently like we do every week and and put in the hours both as coaches and players. And, you know, hopefully we'll uh, uh, don't. Don't worry about Russ over there. We'll prepare as, as players and coaches and, you know, do our best to try to get a win. For the players, come at, beating New Mexico, how important is that to get that win, especially the way you got it to, uh, as far as getting confidence, maybe a little bit of momentum going on the road? I don't know that it's such a big deal, you know, who we beat, but that we got a win. And locker room was really hurting for one. And it feels good to have something to watch the film with a smile on this week. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's just, it's just nice to get a win. You know, we, we work so hard week in and week out. It's, it's time for it. It feels good for it to come together. Bobby, they kind of go hand in hand. It's not only been a long time since this team's won on the road, but back-to-back -back wins as well. Just talk about, you know. Yeah, things, you know, obviously things we're aware of. And, uh, you know, I, I've said it. I think we're a young team that's getting better. Uh, we've been highly competitive against some really good football teams on the road, whether it was Utah State or Louisiana Tech or San Diego State. Uh, those are all games that we had a chance to win in the second half, and, and we played hard and, and just didn't close it out, didn't execute well enough. So, uh, you know, it's obviously next on the on the checklist. Uh, but again, for us, it's, it's also about uh, trying to move up in the Mountain West standings. You know, we've got some goals as a team to to finish uh, in, in good shape in the Mountain West. And obviously, you have to win the conference game, and that makes all conference games big. You see an identical team, uh, obviously record-wise, but also they're a little banged up, and they've had their <coughs> issues this year. In Colorado State, you kind of see a mirror image this year, sort of? Yeah, they've got some things uh, that are synonymous with what's gone, gone on here. Um, you know, it'll, it's just it's one of those deals where I go back to being a league game, people you're familiar with, uh, those are fun and exciting to play. So. Well, our guys will be fired up to play, and, and uh, you know, I think it, it, just like all the games we've been in, uh, they'll be good. it'll be a good game. Every time you go on the road, we ask about the, the, the streak. I guess. Yeah, it'd be you... good to win once we could quit talking about it, you know. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, the, there's only one, one way to fix that and for us to be able to not have to answer that question anymore. That'd be to win one. Don't worry about that over there. Yeah, Russ, it wasn't you this time, Russ. <laughs> you guys are falling down in the corner. That's part of your plan, isn't it? 
Yeah. You met, you're, you're, the, you're, the sec, off, look what you're the second one. Let's let the Polish guy yeah. sit there and see what happens. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, you know, let's win. You know, let's we, let's get a win. It would be. I'm tired of try to distract you by having guys <laughs> fall down in the corner. Break ankles and we'll put them on injury list. To the players as well, though, it's it's the elephant in the room, so to speak. And like you said, there's one way to solve it. The street question. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not something that you know I let myself focus on a whole lot, just because it's you know, a lot to worry about, and really all that we need to focus on is playing and preparing for another game this Saturday. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Just prepare next game, most important game ever. Um, it, the feels the same everywhere you go. As Coach Hauk always says, so just gotta go out there and perform your best. Coach, kind of bounce off the injuries. Colorado State's had a little uh, quarterback competition, especially last week. Uh, their uh, original starter got broken collarbone early in the year, came in, didn't look so hot. Then their redshirt freshman came, came in. Can you talk about the quarterback battle and what you expect? Yeah, uh, you know, it's hard to know what to expect. You know, it's, there's a reason why, uh, why uh, Coach Mack has done that, because he wants us to prepare for both. But, uh, you know, they're not all that dissimilar. I think the the Smith kid, the freshman, um, throws the ball well. Uh, he's done some good things. Uh, watched the Hawaii game a little bit right before I came down here, and uh, he did some good things in there. He did some good things in the Wyoming game. So uh, you know, it, they're going to run their offense. It's it's not that they're they're similar. Um, I would anticipate both of them will play, and we got to handle whoever's in there. You ever seen had a season like this where you face so many? Backup, second and third string quarterbacks. I, no, I haven't. I was. It's funny you asked that because I was thinking about it this morning, early on. I was going, "Gosh, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks," and sometimes that's a that makes it a little more difficult because they're they're different. You know, you prepare. You get almost prepared two game plans, uh, but that hasn't been the case in this week certainly. And uh, you know, last week we had to have two different game plans. One for the almost three, one for the Wildcat stuff, one for the, and then one each for the two different quarterbacks. Uh, but this week, I think it'll be pretty uniform. So. Alex, how big was that for your defense? You guys have been beat up a little bit this year to, to kind of contain New Mexico's rushing attack and, and do what you were able to do. Yeah, it feels definitely good. They have many good rushers on their team, very athletic kids. So it was nice to stop them, hold them to seven points, and overall just get a victory take that momentum, talk about carrying that over, and, and like we said, uh, doing it back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, just we just got to keep improving week to week. And, you know, we held them seven points, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. That locker room is kind of wild, guys. It, is it a good sign? can't believe we let you in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Access all you're access sworn to see You're sworn to secrecy, so. Is it a good sign for where the program's at that here you guys are, one and eight, you get a win, and you look at that locker room and it's like, you, know, you guys just won the BCS title. I mean, it just shows, I think, that are you encouraged by how much everybody cares still at this point? Uh, hey, I'll that's how, I'll, I'll, I'll take it then you can comment. It, that's how it's supposed to be. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. It's a big deal. College football games are hard to win, and uh, our guys put in a lot of time and effort, and when they win, they should be excited. Never take it for granted. I only give myself about 24 hours after every game to celebrate or mourn. So in those 24 hours, I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. And locker room is where that all starts for me. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Just enjoy it when, while you can because you only have so many games in your college career and only so many you can win. So we all try to enjoy it. And then obviously forget about that and move on to the next week. Is, is this as excited as you guys have been, you know, about playing a game on the road, you know, coming off a, a momentum win like that, and, you know, to this late in the year to kind of build for next year maybe? Um, I mean, I have a little bit different outlook on it being a senior, but it's still exciting to be able to get out there again and go play a road game, and especially somewhere where it's going to be pretty chilly. I'm, I'm not about to say I'm looking forward to that, but it will be another experience to add to my memory bank. But, yeah. Looking forward to the future. Uh, really excited for the program that I'm going to leave behind here. It's going to be pretty awesome to see what the young guys are going to do next year. Yeah, and for me, I just love this game. I, I'm excited every week I come out to play, and it's fun going on the road and trying to win in a different, different stadium. So 
I don't know, every game is just exciting for me. Alex, you touched on this a second ago, but New Mexico has scored 29 points against Boise State. They put up a lot of points against a pretty good Fresno State team. If you could talk specifically about the confidence level of the defense going into this week. Um, I think we're trying to get on momentum, I guess. You know, we had a good game, but we got to forget that because every game is different. Like, they had a different offense than this week. And so it's time to forget that and improve ourselves, make our adjustments, and get better. Bobby, how's uh, Nick? It seems like after every game, he's maybe got a, another hobble, or maybe it's the one that he's had the week before. How's he doing? Sherry? Sherry, yeah. Yeah, he's. I think he's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's football. You get knocked around. You know, it, general soreness, just like everybody that plays. And, uh, He'll be ready to go today, I'm sure. He's, he's kind of reaching some freshman milestones here. Uh, you just talk about what he's been able to do this year. Yeah, he's doing some good things. Um, obviously, he's, uh, he's learning a lot, uh, which I think bodes well for his future. And when it's the quarterback you're talking about, that means the team's future to a degree. Uh, you know, some of the freshman records might be interceptions, too. So we need to fix that to a degree. But. Uh, you know, he's doing a good job, and, uh, you know, I, I say that with a smirk on my face because you, you guys know I love him and think he's uh, got a bright future. Yeah, see, for once, I'm trying to be positive. There there you you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we he's, on the same he's doing a great job. <laughs> We're on the same page. I like yeah. your shirt. You like your shirt. <laughs> yeah. he's for the offensive line, Doug, same thing. I mean, just the job that the running backs are doing, obviously, is a testament to what you guys are going to do, and you, you don't get the credit that you deserve, but just talk about what it means for the offensive line to see these guys getting 1,000 yards. I mean, Tim hit 1,000 yards this weekend, and both Tim and Bradley had over 100 yards. And it speaks volumes about an offensive line when you can produce 100-yard rusher in a game. But to have both guys come in and have such success on the ground, I couldn't be more proud of our five guys up front. I mean, we did a great job, and I guess uh, kind of exerted our will a little bit. And that's something that offensive line does. And we're the bulldozers, glorified earth movers. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, what does it say about an offensive line that's also been really banged up this year to have a, a pr productive running game like Tim and Bradley have had? Uh, yeah, we've had a couple of guys uh, catch a few unfortunate breaks. And the guys that have stepped up to take their place, and we've had uh, Cam Jefferson move around to a bunch of different positions this year. And he's done a real good job with adjusting to that. He's played on the left, on the right, inside, outside. Uh, he's done a real good job with that. And then our, our uh, true freshman stepped up to the left guard spot. And he's been doing a very good job on the left side. And very excited to see what the future is going to hold for him. But as, a, as an offensive line group, having guys banged up and being able to have faith in young guys or old guys to step in and fill those shoes is really something excellent and something I'm glad to see that that's happening around here and will continue to happen in the future. Well, I mean, talking about young quarterback, young, young backs will be back, young receivers. I know it's a little early about recruiting, but are you getting interest from particularly skilled guys that maybe you wouldn't have gotten interest from with the numbers you're putting up this year? Yeah, uh, we've, believe it or not, uh, similar to what we've talked about in the past about recruiting is we've had uh, pretty good reception from the recruits. It's, it's going to be a, uh, a really small recruiting class, so we're not rushing into things. It's not like we have to sign 25. We're not going to be even close to that. So uh, we're we're watching a lot of senior film and and making some uh, final evaluations. And uh, you know it'll be like that class two years ago where we were we were kind of late in recruiting. But it'll be a smaller class and uh, had a lot of guys come to games and uh, kids are enthused. What how many do you expect to sign? Uh, uh, probably somewhere in the 15, 16, 17 range. Because so, of carryovers? Yeah, carryovers. And, well, we don't have many seniors. I think our number is, I want to say our number is 13. Doug, do you like the nickname Thunder and Lightning for Tim and Riley? Um, I don't know. That's a... Do you care? <laughs> it doesn't really matter a whole lot. I don't really get to see them unless they're breaking a long run, which is kind of how I like it. 
so I have <laughs> Thunder and Lightning. Huh? I'll have to bring that up to them in the locker room here in a little I think bit. Bradley's Bradley's so, yeah. Oh, Bradley did? That's his own nickname. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'll run with it. If Bradley says it, I'm all for it. Thunder and lightning in the backfield. Coach, what do you think of it? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I was, that's what I was hoping he would say. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. I just, let's win. <laughs> I'm assuming Tim's the lightning and Bradley's the thunder. I don't know anything about that. It's tough for a guy to five foot three to be thunder. <laughs> like he plays big. He, he does. Love that guy. So, was that like as perfect a running game as you could have had, or is that the blueprint last week? Uh, you know, there's never been a perfect game played. So, uh, as these guys know, here in about in about uh, well, as soon as you guys will let us go, we'll uh, we're gonna be correcting. <laughs> okay, Bobby, get a little political on us tomorrow. Don't don't tell us who you're voting for unless you want to. The but the voting booth is private, and confidential. <laughs> Y'all remember that. You don't have to tell anybody. Just do the right thing. <laughs> do what's right for America tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, okay. Part of the young, the young kids. So, how, how, sorry. When do you go vote? When do you go vote? Or I, have you already? I already have. I have never missed one. <laughs>